It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Lana Dampkite. As a novice writer, I always struggle when writing for characters, but within my two main protagonists, Spring Green from a project that shares his name, and Alex Diaz from a project called Codename L-A-M-L, the main roadblock I usually come across is the fact that they are supposed to start as somewhat unlikable characters, with Spring Green being uh, being a wannabe hero who just wants the title without being responsible for it, and Alex coming from a more Slice of Life series, just being generally grumpy and with a bad temper. The question is, how in your opinion slash experience do you write an unlikable protagonist without making an unlikable story? I think the key to it, or at least one key to it, is to ensure that your audience at least understands where your protagonist is coming from. Like, if there is a reason why... Alex is always grumpy, then even if it's a bit abrasive, they can at least maybe understand or sympathize. Uh, if Spring Green really wants to achieve something, that aspiration in it of itself isn't necessarily off-putting. So show your audience what challenges they face and what they're doing to confront them, and that will immediately give your reader a, a, a reason to root for them. Whether or not they do uh, varies on other factors, but don't just make them unlikable for the sake of making them unlikable. You know, if they are if they have flaws because they're flawed individuals, that's fine. But don't be hung up on the idea of, "Oh, I have to make something that is abrasive that will get better later." If it's just there for that, you're doing yourself a disservice. What does it do to serve the character and what does it do to serve the story? All right. Focusing just on Spring Green for a bit, there's a character that acts as a rival for Green, Summer Red, who is supposed to eventually be retired from the story with a setup for his own spinoff. Do you think it's a good idea to plant the seed for some secondary stuff in the main series, only for it to be resolved in a separate story? Or do you think that would be unsatisfactory as a reader? I would advise, number one, not to get too distracted by your grand interconnected personal universe i say this is someone who has done that before and it really trips you up focus on getting the one project done and if you have time and room then expand uh as for the relationship is between spring green and summer red whatever their interaction is by the time summer sees their way out of the story make sure that their story with spring green is resolved that that arc has come to a satisfying conclusion. And then if you get to pick up summer red story later down the line, there's room to explore other aspects to them. So sure. See a few things, but make sure that you're telling the principal story first. If they are there to interact with spring green and bring them to a certain conclusion, Make sure you see that through first. Don't just put them in there because you want them to be a spinoff later. That's just taking up space. All right. Enough of my OCs for now. Let's throw some Sonic questions. Sonic Superstars was recently announced. And as fans of the Blue Blur, what's on your wish list? This question goes for both Ian and Kyle. I must abstain because I know some stuff and I also don't know stuff. So (laughs) I don't want to accidentally spoil things or inadvertently spoil things. Yes, there is a difference between accidentally and inadvertently, at least in my mind. (laughs) You know too much. (laughs) Meanwhile, I know nothing. Well, okay, I know a few things. Um, Not from me, you don't. No, 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 actually, I know from what's been publicly revealed. Uh, I hope Amy gets a better super form than she got in Origins. That's really about it. (laughs) Uh, Otherwise... I don't know. I'm just hoping for a good classic Sonic game. I'm hoping that the 2D gameplay with 3D graphics goes over better than Sonic 4 did. I mean, yeah, that's really about it. I'm hoping the level design is fun, and I hope the music is good. And that's really all I want. I just want more classic Sonic, and I'm here for it. Uh, I hope Honey makes some kind of appearance. That would be nice. Uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you want on your 
on Sonic Superstars. What do you want Sonic Superstars to be? Put it down in the comments below. Crossover question. How long do you think Eggman and his army could last against the Doom Slayer? And why would it be three seconds or less? Well, it'd be a little longer than that because the Slayer likes to take his time eviscerating everything that he comes across. <laughs> Rip and tear until uh, he's the going job to is meticulously. Done. <laughs> yeah, he's going to meticulously tear things apart, badnik by badnik, robot by robot. So it, it may take a few minutes. It may even take all day. It's just, it'll be done. That, that's about it. All the king's horses and all the king's men can't put Eggman back together again. Yep. Yep. Just brutal. The year is 2034. Sega's decided to bring back to life the storybook series and wants you to write the script, the story they're adapting. Why, DreamWorks Shrek 1 through 4, of course. So, who would be who? I'm a little confused because they only made two movies. They certainly didn't make two more unnecessary, unfunny, sterile sequels that should be banned from any re-release or re-airing and be burned forever in the fires of hell. No, they only made the two. So, um... Yeah. My immediate thought is Sonic kicking open the door to a Crush 40 cover of All Star. All Star. Yeah. <laughs> Could not think of the title for the Save My Life. I, I could kind of tell. <laughs> it happens. I mean, I guess Eggman is Far Quad. Uh, <laughs> Princess Elise stands in for Princess Fiona and. Her horrible secret is night is that at night she turns into a hedgehog played by Amy. That'll really piss people off. Uh oh, oh no. Tails isn't Donkey, is he? Oh he absolutely is. Oh okay. <laughs> and Shadow is Puss in Boots. Okay. <laughs> Pray for mercy from Puss in Boots. <laughs> I mean he already kinda has the voice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, who's Knuckles in this scenario? Hmm. The gingerbread man? <laughs> <laughs> Not the gumdrop boxing gloves! <laughs> mm, who is the muffin man? With such a brief cameo, does it really need to be anybody? I set you up and you didn't take it. Well, I mean, shut up! <laughs> Pinocchio. Who's Pinocchio? Vector. <laughs> okay, why? Because that ridiculous snout of his gets even longer. <laughs> Say uh, something ridiculous, like you're wearing women's underwear. I'm uh, wearing women's underwear. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> no. You most certainly am are. I most certainly am not. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> See, I just thought it would be like Tangle. Tangle's tail gets longer every time she likes. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Leave the Kalex to be the three little pigs, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember everyone who's in the movie. Oh, there's a bajillion characters. I know. It's like the cast, the, the dragon. Who is the dragon? Uh, and, I guess we have the dragon and Prince Charming. I guess the dragon could be Cosmo if Donkey is Tails. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going to say bio lizard, but I mean, <laughs> uh, if you can manage to figure out how to make Cosmo look like that, sure. Okay. Yeah, why not? Prince Charming Silver. Mm, I was going to say Jet, but yeah, Silver works too. Just to hear that voice being that smug and aloof, hilarious. <laughs> Flat hilarious. It's true. It's true. I'm receiving word that Black Doom is the fairy godmother. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, it's certainly the most throat-destroying version of I Need a Hero in the world. <laughs> mm. Humpty Dumpty. Who is Humpty Dumpty? Eh, now we're getting into... We're getting real... We're getting real off, off track. Yeah. It wasn't Humpty Dumpty in one of the Puss in Boots spinoffs? Probably. I don't know. Uh, nah, 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 we're not going into that territory. <laughs> the only good Puss in Boots movie was the last one they did. Yes, yes. That one was good. That one was very good, actually. Uh, that one needs to be... 
I guess if you're gonna pull the the death wolf from there, it would have to be whisper. Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> have any other suggestions? Throw them down below. You know what to do. While I get the fact that multiverse stories are getting kind of old now, I always like the idea of Sonic getting his own into the Spider-Verse. Without taking copyright issues into account, what Sonics would you be interested in the most bringing together? As a clarification, the only Sonic from a different time allowed is Classic. The others have to come from non-canonical parts of the franchise, such as Archie, Sonic X, Adventures of, etc. I think you need to go for what's the most different. Yeah what would be the most interesting. So, you know, if we're talking Archie Sonic, especially late run, that's so close to modern that it's nuanced. It's not as fun. Same goes for Sonic X. They're too close to each other. Even boom kind of skates the line where it's just a slightly more sarcastic, lighthearted Sonic visually he's more distinct. Sure. But they're all kind of like low tier selection adventures of who is basically Bugs Bunny. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Although, is his personality um, really all that much different from Sat AM Sonic? <sighs> Not really. Honestly, I would see, say it's more like a fusion between Boom Sonic and Sonic X Sonic. I mean, kind of? You get but... the best of both worlds, really. Yeah, but they're not... Re is, yeah, but I mean, Sat AM and Adventures of, I think you could just say, yeah, this Sonic represents both. I feel like Adventures of is still more cartoonish than Sad AM. Sad AM has some, I mean, design wise, sure, but Sad AM has more gravitas and character yeah. to him. Eh. I'd say you could, I'd say that the Venn diagram overlaps more between Sad AM and uh, Underground Sonic. I guess they seem more like just the same character plopped down into different circumstances. Eh, more or less, but I would argue Adventures of is a little more wacky out of the three. Well, that's just because its world is more wacky overall. Mm -mm -mm, granted. Um, Nikki out of the Koro Koro magazines. So yes. you have, you know, the the wimpy little wet blanket who doesn't want to go into adventure until the powers of God allow him to turn into Sonic. Uh, mainline, of course, classic, who for humor's sake is mute and no one can understand why. Uh, let's see. Movie Sonic, of course. Yeah, there you go. He's distinctive enough. And he still has that kind of young up and comer vibe that he would look to the others for direction. You know, they're all experienced Sonics. He's still learning this hero thing. Yeah. And gets to take on the mentory big brother role, role to Nikki, I guess. I think I, I, I do like having boom Sonic in there because he is sort of like a more world wary. Like he's kind of like a, like he's been through some stuff, even though obviously the mm -hmm. boom world is very silly. He's kind of like, just it's like, he's one of who's like sized to <laughs> have to do something. He's just a ball of sass. So I think he could work. It's like a the grumpy old man of the group. He's he's the one who finally turned 16. <laughs> <laughs> and we would be remiss to not bring up Sonic the Comic Sonic. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, Flanderized representation of his bad attitude aside, he is kind of more the sour note out of all of them. That's true, yeah. That very dry biting British sarcasm that the others don't possess. So he would add a little bit of extra spice to the group. Yeah, but he would have, he would also have a British accent because he has to. Oh yeah, he has to. <laughs> it's required by law. <laughs> by law. He sounds more British than Starline. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite Archie stories is the team up slash confrontation between Knuckles and Shadow. I always like the dynamic those two have, and I would love to see it again. How would you, as one of the writers who contributed to their dynamic, describe it? Uh, it's kind of like two matching magnetic poles being put close to each other. You can feel the power generated between them, but they are also repelling each other as hard as they can. They're both very self-serious. They're both driven 
they're both uh, kind of laser focused on what they want to achieve and think that they know how to do it best. So there's so many similarities between the two of them and they do not see it. And they would be rather insulted that you pointed it out. So that kind of abrasiveness lends to some fun interactions, but also their ability to function together makes them just a badass duo and you like to see them win. Mm -hmm. I'm down. It's kind of like you take the Sonic and Knuckles dynamic and you know, in Knuckles' mind, he would like Sonic a whole lot better if he was just more like him. And then he's put in a situation where he has a Sonic-like character who is more like him, and he still can't stand him. <laughs> Dang it. I just hate everybody. <laughs> Guess that would make sense. <laughs> Could I be wrong? No. Clearly, it's the hedgehogs that are the problem. Yes. I mean, yeah, except Amy. Amy's okay. <laughs> yeah, she's all right. <laughs> uh, Amy and Knuckles get along well, actually. So, well, that's because Amy can bridge any gap. <laughs> Just about, yeah. Mm. Mr. Flynn, you're in a dark room contemplating any and all weapons you can think of with a photo of Rayman looking alive and happy in your pocket. In front of you, there is one single rabbit tied to a chair, the last one. So, what'll it be? A flamethrower? Some barbarian slow torture. A merciful quick death. You finally have the chance to make him pay for taking the Rayman franchise away from you. The only weapon I need is the one I was born with. And with these two hands, I will choke the life out of that miserable <laughs> maggoty rabbit. So the last thing it sees in its pitiful little life is just how much I hate it. Wow. Having a rabbit, you you would you would bring yourself to murder something if it were a rabbit. Amazing. Well, how do you think all the other ones were wiped out? Oof, oof, oof. Dark. <laughs> Sorry, rabbit fans. I don't know how many of you are, but hmm. <laughs> Let Ian kill a rabbit as a treat. <laughs> ah! You got that right. <laughs> How would you approach a symbiote saga with Sonic and Shadow, respectively? As in, how do you think it would affect both of them to form a connection with one? Well, if we're going with the kind of general classical concept that the symbiotes are kind of nasty beasties that bring out your worst tendencies, I know it's gone in a completely different direction. The books have done some crazy stuff with them. I'm going by a like, classic 90s popular general understanding of them because... That's more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonic would be fine for a bit. And the extra moves he can get off this thing, you know, he sees no problem in it. You know, now he's got a traveling buddy and they bop robots together and they have a good old time. And no, he's not going to put a bit of brains on that chili dog. We'll be fine with just the chili and the dog. Thank you. But then it starts to talk a little too much. The invasive thoughts start getting too intrusive. Tails kind of pulls up the multi-dimensional wiki and goes, Sonic, this thing's bad news. You need to get rid of it. And so finally, you know, Sonic is struggling to maintain control of his own body at this goo monster trying to take him over. So he hits maximum velocity. That Sonic boom blasts that thing clear <laughs> off him. And yeah, Tails figures out that its sound is its weakness. Loud sound. Mm -hmm. So that makes well, sense. Yeah, multi-dimensional wiki. Yeah. And uh, cheating <laughs> shadow shadow isn't fond of having a tag along now, but it does increase his already considerable power. So it's a means to an end. Why not extra slashy, slashy, stabby, stabby moves, a spin dash that now has a radius of blades. Sure. Why not? And those intrusive thoughts get in a little too easy because, you know, kill them all. Let God sort them out. Makes sense to him from the get go. <laughs> Don't need to tell him twice. <laughs> Until, you know, Rouge kind of gets through to him that this is kind of going off the rails. Are you making these decisions? Are you sure you're the one making these decisions? And once Shadow gets it in his head that he is no longer in control of his own destiny, then it's time to see this thing go. And it's not quite as easy. Like, it trips him up so he can't reach full Sonic Boom speeds. 
Omega opens up on him with all the firepower he has, almost gets it off, but darn thing whisks him away <laughs> to some kind of safety until finally pops off the inhibitor rings and goes full chaos shadow and just burns the thing off his body. Rouge tells uh, Shadow that uh, this is getting a little too black doomy. And he's like, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, do not want. <laughs> just yeets it away. <laughs> So the two squirming, barely surviving remnants fuse together into something just strong enough that it can slither and seek out a new host. That massive bioform over there, yes, with it, they will devour worlds. And Big picks it up and goes, ah, chewing gum, and destroys the symbiotes for good. <laughs> Funny, I thought you were going toward Eggman. I was like, hmm, this can't be good. But I like your, I like this version better. <laughs> God, now I'm imagining Surge as like a Carnage style symbiote, mm, though. Mm, mm. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's the one giving the intrusive thoughts. The symbiote's going, "Whoa, hey, mm, I, I think I'm needed elsewhere." And she's like, "No, no, no, you're mine now." <laughs> I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me, son. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, Trippy. The nerd's infinite wiki thing says that in one arcade game, Venom got bigger with water. You know what to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> and now you have Kaiju symbiote. Oh, no. But also, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Please. Please. Uh, all right. Let's move on. I created Spin Green a long time ago with the idea of him being very Sonic inspired. But as mentioned before, he's also supposed to start as this very, to be honest, big idiot who thinks too big of himself. My question is, how would you make such a flawed character evolve into a larger than life hero with a Sonic like philosophy? Well, if you want your end goal, then is for Spring Green to believe in freedom for all and the sanctity of life for all. So where are they to begin with? Now, do they already believe this, but it's ill-defined? Do they not believe this? Have they never put any thought into it? Where do they start, and how do they get to that end? What do they experience? What do they learn? How are they challenged so that this mindset, this personal philosophy is created within them? doesn't matter whether they're a genuinely good person to start with or if they're a big dumb idiot. It's the character arc that will carry them and who they are, in this case, the big dumb idiot, Mm -hmm. will influence how they meet each challenge and how they uh, can or cannot process the information that's coming into them that will shape them into where you want them to go. All right. Another character in Spring Green is Celeste. A girl whose whole gimmick is that she is ridiculously strong, like punch a hole into the moon strong. I find writing for her really hard, since realistically, most of her fight should end in one single punch. But that wouldn't be any fun. Any tips in writing powerhouse characters that are on another level? I personally think Superman from the Justice League animated series is a good reference. Well, the question is, what level of control does she have over this power? You know, is it something where she can pull her punch and not atomize somebody's face? Or is she all out all the time? Because if it's the latter, that gives her a personal challenge that she has to take into account every time she gets into an encounter. You know, does she have to worry about collateral damage? Does she love the pristine environment and is fearful of disrupting it just because she's that immensely strong? It's the kind of world of cardboard speech. You know, how much does she have to rein herself in to control her power? And has she reached that level yet? You know, since we cited the DC animated universe, you know, one of the first scenes we see of Superman in his own series is when he's trying to stop a falling plane, he rips the wing straight off because whoops, you know, what are joints and weak points within Mm -hmm. structures, you know? You can't manage that strength necessarily, or he's still learning to properly control it. So maybe that's how you get around this initially is that, sure, she could end any fight immediately, but it will always be to an extreme. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know the the tone that you're going for with your particular story, but 
you know, if she can you know, liquefy somebody's organs just with a backhand, does she have any compunctions to killing people? You know, are the enemies she's facing those who deserve that level of harsh treatment? And if not, or she doesn't want to go that far, how does she hold herself back? And that personal struggle, you know, is interesting and gives you a reason for why she is not just saitama ing everything. <laughs> that makes that makes sense. You know, good questions to ask yourself. Well, that was the last question from Lana, but she has one more thing to add. This isn't really a question, but I'm satisfied with the things I already asked, so I just wanted to thank both of you. Mr. Flynn, your writing has been a great source of inspiration for me, and you created some of my favorite stories in my favorite franchise in the world, and for that, you'll always have my gratitude. And Mr. Kyle, you have kept this podcast going for years. The amount of work that takes is gigantic, and you have a whole other podcast to take care of. I truly admire both of you. You helped me going during the tough times. Glad we could do that for you, Lana. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And if you want to show your appreciation just as much as Lana does, you can get a Bumblecast mini of your own by heading to patreon.com slash Bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash Bumblecast, or becoming a YouTube member. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Catch you in the next one.